Well, that ended the first part of the news, and welcome back to this uh, second segment of the prime time. Today, we will be looking at how to conquer cancer, but most especially cervical cancer in young girls and women. On set with me is the Executive Director of Humanity at Heart International Organization, Tata Maya Evelyn. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, Sibiri. Good evening. Okay, we'll be talking about health, but centered on uh, female cancer, that is cervical cancer. Now, as a health advocate and working with an enthusiastic team to create public awareness and advocating for prevention and timely treatment for women diagnosed with cervical cancer, how has the response been in Cameroon to, to improve uh, uptake of screening? Thank you, Subiru, for that question. Uh, let me start by saying the uptake of cervical cancer screening is struggling to be optimized in Cameroon as we go about creating awareness for people to know that this is a public health concern because cervical cancer is actually the only cancer that is treatable at 100%. So, so far so good, we've been struggling to raise public awareness throughout the country. So we are hoping that by 2030, we should be able to do something great. And in how many towns have you been already? We have been in six regions. Okay. creating awareness, most especially using the documentary on conquering cancer. All right. So we have been doing that. We create awareness, we send the women to other facilities to be screened, and then the young girls vaccinated. All right. In November 2020, the World Health Organization adopted a global strategy and a call towards the elimination of cervical cancer everywhere. With the 90-70-90 targets by 2030, what are these targets all about? And how possible is that in Cameroon? I think that is a very good question. 2020 saw the adoption of the global strategy by WHO to vaccinate at least 90% of young girls aged from 9 to 15 years and screened 70% of women at age 35, then at 45, and then treat those who are diagnosed with positive HPV and then manage those who have invasive cancer. That is the last, that's, that's a 90%, 90, 70, 90 target. So when WHO saw this, we are optimizing that we will be eliminating cervical cancer by vaccinating these young girls coming 2030 and then screening the 70% of women and then treating those who have the pre-cancer lesions and managing those with invasive cancer by 2030. Talking about the vaccination, are people responding to that? So because fast. with the meat of vaccination left and right, parents might be a bit reluctant in sending, sending their daughters to get themselves vaccinated against a cervical cancer. I think that, that was before, but now the response is quite promising because the first thing was people were not aware of the importance of this vaccine, most especially when it came at a time when we were talking mostly about the coronavirus. So many people, like Riley said, they had misconceptions about vaccination. But nowadays, as we are creating awareness through this documentary, and we are also working in collaboration with other facilities, many women now know the importance of protecting their young girls from contracting HPV. So the response on vaccination has been promising. And what is that documentary all about? Actually, the documentary Conquering Cancer is a moonshine agency production, which is giving us the details on global response towards elimination of cervical cancer. This agency is actually located in Melbourne in Australia, and the documentary actually is very rich to teach us how other countries have been working so hard towards the elimination of cervical cancer. And that is why we are adopting this documentary in Cameroon that if other countries that are low income countries could eliminate it or are trying to eliminate it, we can do that in Cameroon. And do you think Cameroon can eliminate that? Absolutely. We can if we believe. The only thing we, we want to launch is collaborative effort, good political will. We involve everyone. We need a government to be on board. We need everyone to be on board. The women, the men, the religious leaders, decision makers, policy makers. If we all unite, this is very possible because that is the only cancer that we can treat at 100%. Does eliminating cancer only limit itself on telling people or sensitizing people on getting themselves screened? 
or getting themselves vaccinated. Does it only limit itself there? Not at all. Not cancer? at all. We we do we do a multi-purpose. Uh, do a lot at Humanitar Heart. When we create awareness, it's not just enough. We want people to get engaged. We want people to take action. I can tell you, this is cervical cancer, which you can contract at the first launch of sexuality. That knowledge is not enough, but I need to get you engaged into getting screened so that we will be able to know if you have the HPV or not. From that moment, if you are diagnosed with the pre-cancer lesions, we should be able to navigate you through treatment. And if your cancer is advanced, we should be able to navigate you th through palliation. So it's a continuum of cancer care. It's not just enough, and we equally teach you how to live healthy, behavioral change. We need your, 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 your emotions, your physical being, your spiritual beings to be on board. Because if you go to the hospital and they tell you, Subiru, you have cancer, obviously you are destabilized. Mm -hmm. Many people think that cancer is a death sentence. So when we create awareness, we go as far as counseling our patients to know that this is not actually a death sentence. And talking about healthy living, don't you think it should be part of uh, conquering cancer? It is. It is actually. We don't just talk about screening alone. We don't just talk about vaccination alone. You need to live healthy by changing your behaviors. If you're a heavy smoker, you change. If you drink a lot of alcohol, you change. If you have multiple sexual partners, you limit them. Those are risk factors for you to contract the HPV. That's human papilloma virus, which is the virus that causes cervical cancer. So you need behavioral change as well. Okay, it's true that uh, in the recent events you've been organizing and optimizing strategies by projecting on the Conquering Cancer documentary, as you earlier said, and the next event will be at the University of Pamenda. While, uh, why target universities? If you notice where well, statistically, our population in Cameroon is less than 30 years. Like many of us, like females, are less than 30 years. And when you are at the university, that, that's a turning point. You see, many students are exposed to a lot of things that we are trying to prevent them from launching into sexual activities, which is leading them to become high risk bearers of HPV. And at the same time, universities are a good target because that's where they gain knowledge. That's where they study. So when you have the knowledge, you are a good influence to the rest because, like I said before, conquering cancer is determined to give a global response in eliminating cervical cancer everywhere. So we assume that or we believe that at the university level or at schools, you learn, you are educated on how to eliminate this in the next generations. There might be people that, that already have invasive cancers, but you are the learning point. You are, ad you are adopting skills, you are building capacity, you are learning, you are trying ways to prevent something that is a public health concern. So that's the reason why we target this age group. One, because they are young. Two, because they're enthusiastic, they're, they're in school, they're studying. They have the brains to learn more, so that's why. And away from this younger generation, do you also sensitize the older women? Absolutely, we do. Because let me speak for my mom. When my mother had HPV, we did not know. Actually, it must have taken 10 to 15 years. Maybe she contracted it at an earlier age. And she lived with it because she did not get screened. And when she got screened, it was already invasive. So we tried to teach older women, because I said before, you are screened at 35 and later at 45, because this is a cancer that stays. It doesn't, we call it non-communicable disease. It doesn't speak. So it can be in you for 10 to 15 years without you knowing. You don't pose any symptoms at the beginning. Symptoms only comes when it's invasive. Mm -hmm. So we speak with them, we encourage them. If you have never been screened in your lifetime, go and get screened. And uh, after how long can someone get screened for cervical cancer? When you go to get screened, when you go to get screened, they're going to check your cervix and then they're going to tell you pay what your health provider has seen on your cervix. If it is a normal cervix, they will give you an appointment to come back in three or five years. If it has precancerous lesions, they're going to tell you we are going to treat it either by thermal ablation or by cryotherapy. They are going to propose you the treatment. If it is invasive, they are going to propose another treatment, whether it's surgery or radiation therapy or chemotherapy. 
And during your sensitization and public awareness, have you come across patients with cancer? Absolutely. How have you dealt with these cases? I must say that is very challenging, Subiru. I must say that is something we are struggling so hard. When I speak, I speak with a lot of emotions because you would not like to see a cancer patient that is already at an advanced stage. That is the reason why we are creating this awareness to prevent it before it reaches that level. It costs, that's not something that an average Cameroonian cannot afford. We want to thank the government because they have actually subsidized some cost of treatment now, which we are grateful for because most of these patients now can afford their radiation therapy. But before, cancer treatment is expensive, it steals your joy, it steals your health, and at the end of the day, you're dead because you did not diagnose that early. I always say early detection saves lives. And how much can that screening cost in Cameroon? Like for humani those who are not aware. Yeah, humanitarian heart creates awareness. Those, now we are engaging with the HPV DNA testing, self-sampling, like we spoke about misconceptions. Many women are always scared to go to the health provider and then maybe because of uh, they are ashamed to, 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 mm -hmm. to get screened, like normal procedure. Now we have HPV self-sampling. Okay. You do it yourself. You collect the samples yourself. So we work in collaboration with... Uh, CBCHS, they collect the samples at 10,000 francs, and then you come get your result. Maybe three days, if it's positive, they propose treatment. They also give you the pricing, but it depends at what level. And we are also working in collaboration with, like, Conquering Cancer, and then other uh, facilities to see that vaccination is being done for young girls to protect them. If you're just joining us, you're watching an interview, a second part of the primetime news on Dash News. Early detection saved life, and that is what uh, we've gotten as a lesson today with Tata Maya Evelyn of the Humanity at Heart International Organization. Thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you, Subiru. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, this edition of the Prime Time. Stay with us for more interesting stories. Coming up at 8 p.m., Adrienne Noboden for the Prime Time in the French language. Remember, the voice of Africa counts, and Dash News is your voice. <laughs>